Hello and we just for you back with another how to play. Today we're looking at how to play this uh, new game called Pick a Pepper. All about spicy chilies and theory sauces by Amigo and Wolfgang Kramer and Kristen Storr. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Wolfgang Kramer is someone I am familiar with with other card games. The, the other guy, not so much. That I can recall, but maybe. He's done other games that I have. And, um, this game has some similarities to Linko, at least that's what I've heard. And I, I suppose so in a way, but not really. In this game, you are trying to use this deck of cards, of course it's a card game, um, to, uh, make hot sauces. And you get numbered cards, these all represent different, uh, degrees of spiciness and peppers, uh, from number one, which is very mild, to... Don't want to touch it. Very hot. Scorching hot. Number 13. And you also get the, the wild cards. It's six of them. You, you don't want to eat those. <laughs> and you will mix these up and deal them out. There's 104 of these plus these six wild cards. So 110 cards, technically. And you also get these uh, hot sauces. Each one of them has a different amount of victory points on them. And also a different condition. The more points, the more cards you need. This one, two points, and you only need a set of three. This is a set of five. Fairly straightforward, I know. Gives these up a, a little mix. There's actually a few more here that can, over here, but I'm going to take out of the game. We're going to choose, and these require eight, nine cards, and this one just two cards. You're going to choose the difficulty level you want to use out of... Uh, a difficulty, you also have this nice three-piece uh, card divider. It's just like a little jigsaw puzzle. You put it together. But you're going to choose a difficulty level based on spiciness. Uh, mild, hot, or scorching. For scorching, you're going to remove the two lowest levels of cards of these. So two set and three sets. For mild, you're going to remove the three highest ones so it's easier. You only need to get sets of two six cards and hot which is what i'm gonna do you're gonna ha remove the lowest set and the two highest sets so it's medium and you're also going to deal on a different number of cards per player depending on that so the highest level the hottest level the hardest level you only get eight cards but the easiest you get ten in the middle we get nine cards each And, and basically this is all about a famous hot sauce cooking competition at the Fuego Festival, which of course means hot. And you're trying to create the hottest collection of sauces to win cooking competition. And what you're going to be doing is collecting and playing cards in phase one. And then the second phase, you will hopefully try, be trying to get these hot sauces. And you're going to be playing up until you get a certain amount of these that is dependent on the player counts. Uh, which it says here what it is. So, in hot, two players, you'll, you need to collect six sauces. Three players, you need five sauces, and so forth. And I'll probably just do a little two-player game here. Just to show you a little bit. So the first thing you're going to do is, you know, you set all these up, put these aside for the moment. You also get this uh, spoon. This is going to go to whoever is the first player. You give it at the start of the game to whoever last ate something spicy. So I'll do that. I'll just put that over here for the moment. You're going to deal out cards. It is divided to start off with. And you're going to put unique numbers in different slots. So there's a 6, a 13. And when you get one that's the same, you will put it in that same slot. Oh, another 13. One goes there. A 3. A 
or three. Ideally, you you want to see, you know, two or three. You don't want just one of each kind, because that's not as much fun. <laughs> two, eight, one, uh, one, and an 11. Now, if I were to get, say, another 13 or three, I would have to put that in a separate divider. You cannot have more than three cards in one location. And if you happen to get a wild card, that goes in its own separate spot as well. Now, of course, you're going to deal out cards to each player dependent on what it says for the player count. In this case, it's nine cards. And uh, this game, as I mentioned, it just came out this year. Here in North America, it just came out recently. Um, and I was fortunate to find a copy. It, it might be more readily available by now, by the time this video is being released. But when I first got it, there's really only one spot I found it. <laughs> and, um, but it was originally released last year in Germany with a German name, I think it was Saswaf or something like that. I apologize for butchering it. Anyways, each player gets his hand of cards. You're gonna look at them. And on your turn, you're gonna decide to play. You got two phases, this is phase one. And uh, each player is going to decide to play a card or a set of cards. So if I want to, I can play three 11s. Or I can just play, let's say, a 7. Or maybe I play a 12. And actually, uh, whoever has this would obviously play first. And now, my opponent's looking at that. And he says, you know what? I'm going to play the wild card. The wild card counts as basically a 13 and a half when played individually. So he wins and they will get to select one of these sets of cards first. So maybe they selected three 13s. And they're gonna take this and they're gonna put it into their ingredient pile for the second phase. This card, they can then either discard or they can put it in their ingredient pile to save. And obviously it's a wild card, they're gonna save that. And then I'm going to choose, and obviously, uh, since they won, they get this spoon immediately. I'm going to choose, let's say, the free freeze. And do I have freeze in my hand? I don't, which is fine. Maybe I should have taken the 11s. And I will save this one as well. So now we're going to refill this little market, same manner. That is another 13. And again, we're going to do the same thing. My opponent's going to, he's got the spoon. So he's going to look at his hand and he's going to say, play a nine. And I'm going to look at my hand and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to play for your lines. Now, to determine the winner, you're going to look first at who played the most cards. Whoever played the most cards wins and gets the spoon immediately. If more than one person plays the same amount of cards, like in the first round, I don't remember what I played. I played a 12, and they played the wild cards, so because they played the highest card, they win. So you're going to look at first who played the most cards, and then you're going to look at highest value. So in this case, had they played three sixes, I would still win because I played the higher value set, uh, even though they played three sixes, but if they just played... If I'd played, you know, something different. Well, if I played, let's say, two 11s, and they played three sixes instead of the nine, they would win because they played more cards, even though 11 is bigger. So that's how you go about that. And so I'm going to select, you know, one of these sets, or, you know, one of the cards. There's not too many... I'm going to select the 11 because I played 11s and I'm going to put that there and I'm going to save these and then my opponent's going to do the same thing and you can always look at this so they say you know what I'm going to take the 13 and they'll save us and now you refill the market there's another nine and there's a wild card and you just keep doing this until players no longer have any more cards in their hat once all the cards or in 
have either been discarded. And again, when you play a card and you take from here, you can take these and put them in the ingredient deck. And then this, you can take, put in the ingredient deck, or you can discard it. There's a third option, and that is, let's say my opponent plays this card, and let's say they don't want any of these cards. They can simply discard this one and not collect any cards, or put it in your ingredient deck if they want. So you do have the option of not taking any cards. But after you go through the first phase, you will refill the market, and now you're going to bring these out. You can mix them up. It's for the second phase. Once you've gone through all the cards that are in your hand and they're all in your ingredient deck. And you're going to put out two more than there are players. So with two players, you're going to put out two plus two. Four players, you're going to put out four plus two. So there's going to be six for four players, five for three players, and four for two players. And... As you continue going through the rounds, whenever these get taken, you get to um, replenish them, obviously. And you have a max amount that you can have. So with, in this case, we're doing mild with uh, two players, or hot with two players. So we're going to be trying to collect six sauces. Whoever, whenever somebody collects six sauces, or both players are collecting six sauces, the game ends. That's the maximum amount you can have. And it works the same way. So I'm going to look at my hand, and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to play... Ooh. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to play free freeze. And then my opponent's going to go, and they're going to say, you know what? I'm going to take play five thirteens. Now here's what happens in this phase. So they win, they got five thirteens, the wild card. And they can, if they want, continue to take from this market like usual. And we'll say I have this wild card in my hand from before, just for fun. Oh, look at that. No, I can't have that there. See that's what happens when you have when you have a four for a fifth card of the same value, it goes into a separate pile. So anyways, in this case, they played five thirteens. They won. They're going to get the spoon. And they're going to say, you know what? I'm going to take this. Did I have a six thirteen? They don't. And they're going to collect this for points. And these ones have to be discarded now. They're out of the game. And, uh, well, there's nothing here that I can collect with three cards. Three of a kind. So I probably made a mistake playing that, actually. I probably say displayed. Well, whatever. Uh, I will take these sevens instead. And I will discard these. And I'm going to put these in my ingredient deck. And then we will fill the market. Another seven. Wow. That was well suffered. <laughs> and now we deal out another one of these. And hopefully somebody can play a five of a kind. Ideally, you're going to have five of a kind. And you keep doing this back and forth, playing cards, trying to acquire these sauces, these awards, if you will, for spicy sauces, and until you hit that amount, whatever it is for the player count and spicy level that you're using, and then you will add up the points. Whoever has the most points wins. It's a fairly straightforward game. Uh, I like it. Good quality components. No complaints. Nice quality cards. Win and finish. Uh, these are nice. And yeah, it's probably better with more players than less. And I and I know it says it's two to four players. You could probably play five players, I would imagine. But you'd have to alter how many cards and stuff like that. But I think it's probably better with three or four players than two. Just my feeling. But that is that. Pretty cool game. I like it. Hopefully, it's more available at this point. That is that. Pick a pepper. Comment, like, subscribe. We know what you think. Hopefully, that makes sense. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.